Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Holiday season has finally arrived and Christmas is just around the corner. But guess what? Today is Hanukkah. That's right, the Jewish holiday which is considered to be known as the Festival of Lights. And instead of one day of presents, we get eight crazy nights. Yep, just like uh, Adam Sandler's song, which apparently he did all three versions of it. Yeah, most of which had played on the radio constantly during Christmas time. But, yep, this is what it's based on. It's called Adam Sandler's Eight Crazy Nights from 2002, which also was Adam Sandler's very first animated film. But, unfortunately, <laughs> When you expected to see Adam Sandler doing his first animated film, you're definitely going to expect a lot of dark humor with so many gross out jokes, very shallow characters, uh, lots of uh, crazy antics, and lots of lo a lot of cruel and sexual humor, lots of alcoholism and, and depression. Yeah, that's what the movie really has in this movie. But don't expect this to be a feel-good Christmas movie, because it isn't, per se. But as far as this movie is concerned, yes, this movie had been getting a lot of hate by critics. Well, some critics had, had gave some praise to it, mostly for its humor. And also, not many viewers uh, didn't care much about the film. However... Some people actually enjoyed it for what it's worth, maybe as a guilty pleasure, you know, because it did have sort of a cult following, as it turns out. And I can't say I happen to be one of them. And I saw this movie in theaters back when it first came out, and and I remember seeing this along with the short film that they had, because it's a two-disc special edition that I bought at. Uh, Salvation Army that has uh, that has two discs in there, <laughs> and it comes in a uh, in a case that Hollywood Video used to sell, or even the, or at this rate, uh, Suncoast used to sell, and, and they sold it right here at Salvation Army. I, I picked it up uh, last year, and I, I thought it'd be okay to own this movie, and you know, I, I didn't think it wasn't as bad as some people think. So, I, I understand. Uh, so, I, I, I think I could live with it because I love, I do love Adam Sandler. Nothing wrong with that. You know, I have to admit, maybe I was a huge fan back in the day when when Saturday Night Live was very popular. And I used to watch all the characters that they play. And and he really got to me, too. I, I, I always love his humor that he put into all his films. The fact that he did... Movies like Billy Madison and, and Happy Gilmore. I mean, who couldn't forget that scene where he beats the shit out of Bob Barker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From, yeah, the former host of The Price is Right, which Bob Barker, you know, as old as he was at the time, yeah, he's, he is older now, but, yeah, already at the age of 91. He actually beat the shit out of him <laughs> in that movie, and, yeah... <laughs> And he finally gets his last battle at the end. Yeah, it's, it, I, I love that scene. It, it was hilarious. And I also love him in so many films that follow, like The Wedding Singer, The Water Boy, Big Daddy, uh, even the remake of Mr. Deeds and Little Nicky and all his other stuff. Uh, yeah, even though they were considered to be bad, I didn't care. I, I just loved them. Yeah, I. I I consider it to be, you know, one of his guilty pleasures. <laughs> so that's why. But I, I think Eight Crazy Nights um, is far different from any of his other films. And you know, prior to the fact that this was based on his uh, popular song, and, and of course, and being the fact that yes, I am not a Jew, and I don't celebrate Hanukkah. Still. I really did enjoy this movie, for what it's worth.
But if anybody hates this movie, that's fine. I can live with that. Everybody can entitle their own opinion. I can live with that too. But nevertheless, I enjoyed it. The movie stars Adam Sandler, who's also the co-producer and co-writer of the film, with Jackie Tatone, uh, along with Allison Cross doing her singing voice, Austin Stout, Rob Schneider, Kevin Nealon, Norm Crosby, John Lovitz, with Dylan and Cole Sprouts, you know, the, the twin brothers who was in the movie Big Daddy with Adam Sandler also, but went on to do the TV series Zack and Cody you know, on the Disney Channel. With Tyra Banks, you know, who was of course a model for Victoria's Secrets before she went on to do her own talk show and all this other stuff. Mo fashion model, of course. Blake Clark, you know, been in some several films, you know, including The Water Boy, who played Farmer Fran. But he also did a lot of TV shows, also, including Home Improvement. Peter Dante, Ellen Abedini Dow, Karen Farley, Laura Friedman, Tom Kenny, yep, the same guy who gave us uh, Rocco's Modern Life, SpongeBob SquarePants, and many others that he, that he does. You know. He's a voice actor. And, and Carl Weathers, who's been best known for his role as Apollo Creed in the Rocky movies, and later went on to do Predator, Action Jackson, and of course, Happy Gilmore. And it's directed by Seth Kearsley. The movie begins when an alcoholic troublemaker in Dukesbury, New Hampshire, named Davy Stone, who's played by Adam Sandler, had a long history of on this criminal record. He goes around doing all these crazy antics by making a complete fool out of himself at a local Chinese restaurant known as Mr. Chains, who's voiced by Rob Schneider. Who, yeah, and he's also the narrator of the film, by the way. He wants to destroy a menorah of Santa's ice sculpture after he, he made a quick attempt by escaping without paying the bill he was supposed to be charged with. And while already being escaped from the cops, he was about to be sentenced to jail until a seven-year-old Mickey Rooney type of character, who was a volunteer referee of his former basketball league named Whitey Duvall, also voiced by Adam Sandler, who's also considered to himself as an outcast and a joke of the town, just like he is. Mostly about his often disturbing tendencies intervenes and, and and being very senile at times. But meanwhile, at court, the judge had decided to use Whitey's suggestion by sentencing Davy to a community service as a referee in training for his youth basketball league. But under the terms of the community service, if he commits a felony, he'll be sentenced 10 years in prison as suggested so that kind of pretty much leads to a huge disaster during the next day when Davy referees his very first game. Things just turn out even worse when Whitey had suffered a seizure and the game had to erupt brought to an end but attempting to calm Davy down Whitey has taken him to a mall where they actually met a single mother named Jennifer Freeman, who happens to be Davy's childhood girlfriend, who, who now lives with her son, Benjamin. Unfortunately, Whitey, Whitey did remind Davy that he actually lost his chance with her 20 years earlier. Davy still had found himself very attracted to her, despite his alcoholism personality has been changing throughout over the years. And all this time, you know, Jennifer has been disconcerting about him. So as the time progresses, Davy and Whitey's relationship become more contingent by trying to do a lot of crazy stunts together and beginning to hate each other at, at this rate. They both met with humiliation and assault, including that one scene where, where Davy actually knocked Whitey into an outhouse and then started spraying him 
um, with the hose causes him to froze. <laughs> Unbelievable. But upon the doubt, Davy had found a trailer that's already been burned down by a man who lost a bet to him. And once Davy runs into the trailer, he actually rescued a Hanukkah card from his late parents. He then watches the entire trailer burn down while Whitey had opens his home to Davy to accept the invitation at his house. Also living there is his bald diabetic girl twin sister named Eleanor. Yeah, which there was a scene where she started doing a lot of you know, crazy stuff like shaving her forehead and all this other stuff that she does. She does eat a lot too. Anyway, the Duval household had, had come up with so many complex rules by referring to him being as a technical force. They also considered to be very irritating as a couple. But, of course, uh, they had to turn Davy's life all the way around once he's been going through a lot of troubles, who began to remind him of Davy's you know, parents who passed away during a car accident that got struck onto an upcoming truck after it slid it on black ice. Yeah, this was at the time when Davy was, was just a kid having to play one of his basketball games on the recall of the events of, of Hanukkah 20 years ago. But, but after all of this, you know, he started developing alcoholism, you know, barking on his entire life, doing a lot of criminal behavior and everything that he's been doing with all of his life. So that's pretty much what he's been going for. That also leads to uh, the very next day where he spends the whole entire day and night, you know, drinking and and swearing and do all this and, and breaking in into the mall which has already been closed down. Um, he was already hallucinating all these product placement stores that, that you see such as KB Toy Store, Mary Lee, these candies, Victoria's Secret model, and all the rest. Yeah, already talking about his identity and, and the source of his alcoholism. Yeah. He finally uh, opens his parents' Hanukkah card, which contains a message praying for him for being a good son all this time. So that's when he started to break down and cry in tears. Fin finally coming to the term of his loss in an intervention that's been happening but just as soon as the police had arrived to arrest him he escapes and boards on the bus to New York thumb stacks in the road yeah all eight tires which suddenly reminds him of the miracle of Hanukkah he winds up walking off the bus intending to find Whitey and make his amends for all the trouble he has been causing throughout the entire past they wind up you know having an all-star banquet for the entire town's celebration, which one of the members of the community is is recognized for the positive contributions to Dukesbury. So they all had a great time. You know, he finally get the award. And, and of course, for all, all this time, Whitey wants up getting another seizure, which he claims in, in his quote, that is the happiest seizure of my life. That sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, so the movie isn't technically for anybody, for those who've seen this. I mean, yes, but you have to admit, there are some funny humor that they went into it, despite the fact that there are a lot of depressing moments. There are a lot of gross out humor into it, especially coming from, from Whitey and, and his twin sister. And many others that follow. So many... Uh, dark humor involving them being up each other and doing all this crazy stuff. I thought it was pretty funny at times. But you, but then there are other times when I think some of the scenes were kind of let down and pretty stupid. But I guess that's what they really were hoping for once, they, once you see this movie. It also seems to be a reminiscence to Sandler's earlier film that came out the same year called uh, Punch Drunk Love, which, you know, like his character in that movie, he wants up being very frustrated and, 
and does some really strange things, but in comparison, that movie was a drama. This one is a, a comedy. And I, I guess there were some dramatic moments prior to this. Yeah, I, I think they did manage to put it put her off very well when it comes to this. Yeah. And um the animation of the film, um, okay, they look pretty standard like any other animation you often see in in so many films. It's not bad, but it's it's typical. It's it's 2D animation that's uh, felt like any other traditional animation you often see in, in previous years. Seeing that this was made in 2002, and at the time when we were getting a lot of CGI movies, but they were still doing 2D animation. The songs in the movie were not that great, uh, I have to admit, though. Other than the Hanukkah song, although I prefer the first two versions, some of the songs were pretty weak. I, I didn't buy any of this stuff. I know it's, they're trying to figure out all of his problems that needed to be solved prior to this, but I didn't find any single song in this movie very memorable. That's for sure. And I think that was one of the biggest flaws in the film itself. Um, despite of that, um, I did feel sorry for his character. He's been going through a lot of crap throughout the years, especially since he remembers the day his parents died during a car accident on Hanukkah. And that was the worst time that ever happened on Hanukkah. And especially during a basketball game. But that's something that people would feel very depressed about. Yeah. Also the fact that he gave him a Hanukkah card, and that was really sp very special to David, you know, in spite of its problems. And um, we also do feel sorry for Whitey too, because you know, he's been considered as an outcast all this time. You know, they've been treating him like shit. And especially the fact that he has a seizure, so that's, that's not something I would have expected from him. But I, I knew from that point on he would get money after all this time, since he's seven years old. And, and lives with his sister. I didn't think Sandler wasn't that bad, to be honest. I mean, yes, I have to admit some of his characters were annoying. Um, and I did love Mr. Chain, too, his voice by Rob Schneider, so like, it was okay. But other than that, though, I didn't think it wasn't that bad. Uh, it, it's. It's not great, but it's not bad. <laughs> I mean, I've seen terrible Christmas movies in my time already. I mean, who couldn't forget uh, Surviving Christmas with Ben Affleck? Tell me this, that's a horrible Christmas movie, if I ever saw one. And... <laughs> I can deal with that. And there are other depressing movies out there that's, that doesn't seem like I'm, I'm overjoyed, you know, for, for Christmas and everything. But other than that, though, I, I I did enjoy it for what it's worth. I mean, even considering that this was a movie that celebrates Hanukkah besides Christmas and everything, but it, it had its spirit. And, I mean, and, and if you like to watch, you know, all this uh, crazy stuff that they put into this movie, then I guess this is for you. Even if you love Adam Sandler, then I, I think, you know, it'll be worth watching, but... Otherwise, you know, it's not for everybody. It's, it's not really, you know, high praise for everybody, you know, jumping for joy type of holiday film. It's nothing like that. It's just a mean-spirited, very shallow, you know, stupid, crazy, dumb, yeah, and rather strange uh, comedy that you're really expecting to see. But I can deal with dark comedies like this. I mean, I can even deal with Bad Santa, and guess how that film turned out? It became a higher praise from critics. That's something I really expected from a Christmas movie like Bad Santa. I mean, especially with uh, Billy Bob Thornton's performance, but yeah, either way. I mean, I'm not comparing this movie to Bad Santa in that sort of way, because they're both radically different movies. There are, there are a lot of Christmas movies out there that had a lot of dark and strange humor that that isn't just about, you know, being the happy and very cheerful and 
get to spend more time with the family on Christmas. It's just, I mean, there are times when, when you see the the dark side of what of how Christmas really turned out to be. Yeah. And we get that a lot too with so many other Christmas movies I've seen. Yeah. And and they can be hilarious too. So there's no doubt about it. But as a result to Eight Crazy Nights, I mean, at least to give Sandler credit, it was considered to be his only animated film he ever did. Because I don't think he hasn't done any animated films after that. So, <laughs> I guess you can be thankful for that. Because he already did do another kids movie called uh, Bedtime Stories and all this other stuff. So, hey. <laughs> um, but... I don't, other than that though, I, I enjoyed it for what it's worth, um, you know, I love Sandler, I can deal with it all the time, I even love all the other cast, despite of its problems, you know, I would probably watch it, you know, maybe during in the middle of, of either Hanukkah or maybe on, on different parts of the, of the day, whenever I, I have my mood straight or something, I don't know, may, maybe just to, you know, just to laugh out loud and and not feel, you know, bad about it or anything. But I'm okay with this movie and that's okay. Um, I can live with what I, I know what, how everybody feels and I can deal with it. So, because <laughs> let's face it, it is, I mean, like the movie suggested, it is a crazy night, by the way. So, of course, we're going to see a lot of that. So, what do you expect? <laughs> okay. See it on your own risk. So anyway, I give Adam Sandler's Eight Crazy Nights three stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, and Happy Hanukkah.